indigenous women a little bit and specifically the case of Aubrey Dameron. So let me just read off the stats about Aubrey and her disappearance from the charlieproject.org. You can look at all of this there. Okay, Aubrey has been missing since March 9th, 2019 that we know of. She went missing from Grove, Oklahoma. She is endangered missing. She is male by sex, biologically male, but her gender is um, woman, female, whatever you want to call it. She's transgendered, but identifies as a woman. She is Native American, that's her race, uh, and she is Cherokee specifically. Her date of birth is October 22nd, 1993, so she is, or would be 26 now, but she went missing at 25 years old. Her height is 5'9 to 5'10, and her weight apparently can fluctuate or be anywhere between 130 to 170 pounds. Her clothing that she was wearing, when she, oh my god, sorry, that was a tumbleweed of garbage. She asked. 
asked Pearson for money and said she'd contribute some of her own to help get Dameron released. When the police interviewed Robotham about what she told Pearson, she admitted her claim of kidnapping and ransom was untrue, and she was charged with extorting money from Pearson. A photo of her was posted with this case summary. When authorities asked Robotham what she thought had originally had really happened to Dameron, she didn't think Dameron was really missing, or that her parents really didn't know about her whereabouts. No, her whereabouts. Police had got a lead that Dameron's mother's boyfriend had said he had killed her, but they have been unable to confirm this story and haven't named any suspects. They haven't named any suspects in her disappearance officially. Um, I don't know if that's up to date. It says it was updated March 13th, 2020, so probably, but um, no one official has been publicly named because of her transgender identity and the fact that it's uncharacteristic of her to be out of touch with her family. She's considered to be at risk. Yes, her case remains unsolved. Now her aunt, Pam Smith, has been a vocal advocate for her and has really tried to find her and get the word out all across the country and in the local area. So there's a lot of articles where she is quoted or about what she has been doing. So something good has come actually from Pam Smith's advocating and from her work. And I don't know if it's directly from her, but she contributed to awareness in Oklahoma. So I'm gonna read an article from the CherokeePhoenix.org and it says legislation addresses crime against women in Indian country. So this is from March 20th of 2020, so it's very new. It says Washington. When Pam Smith found out that her niece had been radio silent for hours, she started to worry. She called family, friends, and finally local law enforcement in hopes of hearing good news, or any news at all. Before my niece went missing, I knew that the missing and murdered indigenous women epidemic was happening, but I had my head in the sand, said Smith, whose niece, Aubrey Dameron, had been missing, has been missing from Delaware County since March 2019. When you wake up into this nightmare, you realize how Native Americans are treated differently, she said. Smith, her family, indigenous women advocates, and search groups from surrounding areas started conducting searches for Tamron, a transgender woman and citizen of Cherokee Nation. Local law enforcement did not participate in initial searches as they felt there was no evidence pointing to Tamron being in those areas. Yeah, apparently they didn't start doing anything for at least two weeks after she was missing, so... This is a common theme. One of these searches was March 23rd, and the second was March 30th. On one of those, we asked if the county could come out with a canine, because we had some red flags. We found some red flags, said Smith. The county said, why? We're not doing the search. And that was that. Captain Gail Wells of the Delaware County Sheriff's Office confirmed Smith's account. There was absolutely no evidence of Aubrey being in places they searched. They just picked areas to search, which was fine. I understand their concerns, said Wells. The other side of the coin is we have a very small sorry, agency here with very limited personnel. Currently, there are 18 missing and murdered indigenous women cases in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Eight murders, six women, and four unknown... Eight murders, six missing women, and four of unknown status. <sighs> According to the Urban Indian Health Institute, Oklahoma has the 10th highest number of missing and murdered Native, Native women in the nation. The study also reflects cases the Urban, the Urban Indian Health Institute could find from freedom of information requests, talking to families, and willingness of law enforcement to help. Currently, no database exists to collect, track, record, record, and share information on missing and murdered indigenous women cases, which span across tribal, state, and federal jurisdictions. More than four out of five Native Americans, or 83%, face some type of violence in their lives. According to the National Institute of Justice, a research arm of the Department of Justice, 56% of indigenous women have been sexually assaulted. Of those victims, 97% report at least one act of violence committed by a non-native. Well, this is an issue that has been plaguing Native American women for 500 years. And you know, people need to understand that this is a very deep-seated issue. It's not something that just popped up over the last
last 30 years or something. It has its tentacles in native communities and urban areas in U.S. Rep. U.S. Rep. Dev Hayland, Democrat, New Mexico. The Not Invisible Act of 2019, which passed the U.S. Senate on March 11th of, I think, 2020, introduces measures for inter- interagency communication, which is super important, prevention efforts, specialized law enforcement training, and working with tribes to combat the rising numbers. The act essentially establishes an advisory committee on violent crime. The advisory committee would be made up of law enforcement and tribal leaders, federal partners, service providers, survivors of their families, or victim advocates in Hayland, sponsor of the bill, and has moved to the U.S. House. Oh, sponsor of the bill that has moved to the U.S. House. They can make recommendations to the Department of the Interior and the Department of Justice. It just also established it also establishes best practices for law enforcement, she says. Creating a database for missing and murdered native women is no different than than has been done for other areas. I think we've just created databases in a lot of other areas. I can't imagine the challenges here are different maybe a little unique in some ways, but we just have to keep the same level of services to Indian country that we provide in any other part of the country, said U.S. Rep. Tom Cole, Republican, Oklahoma. There are a lot of different things that need to be done, but probably the number one thing would be enhancing the authority of tribal law enforcement, and frankly, also providing the resources to help increase the professionalism of both of those law enforcement units and tribal courts they serve said Cole, a co-sponsor of the bill. It's going to take a significant investment in the justice part of tribal governance. If nobody thinks about these kinds of problems, if nobody thinks of these types of problems, systemically and across the breadth of Indian country, which is very diverse and difficult to legislate for, you're going to have these gaps and you're basing your legislation on very incomplete information, said Cole. The effort on the federal level comes at the same time Oklahoma legislators are moving to address the missing and murdered issue. Ida's Law, named after Cheyenne and Arapaho citizen Ida Beard, who has been missing since 2015, seeks to approve data collection, secure more federal funding to combat crimes against indigenous women, help families navigate the justice system, and create a liaison position for better communication between tribal communities and state federal agencies. We don't have a lot of good accurate data when it comes to this particular crisis chain, and with bipartisan support in the House, we've been able to develop legislation to address that. We don't have a lot of good data, good accurate data when it comes to this particular crisis chain, and with bipartisan support in the House. We've been able to develop legislation to address that, said Oklahoma State Rep. Daniel Bay, co-sponsor of the bill, which is awaiting approval in the state senate. Ida's law would create a liaison position to work with the FBI and federal counterparts when it comes to cases of missing and murdered indigenous people. In early November 2019, the search party for Dameron consisted of volunteers and law enforcement officers and search dogs hit on a plastic tarp. The sheriff's office sent the tarp in December to a lab in Cherokee County. Neither the family or the sheriff's office has heard back as of March. You know, it needs to be out there. People need to know this is really happening. It's not just something you're going to see on TV or read a book. It's what we're living, said Smith. Yeah, Smith has put together a Facebook page. She's talked to a lot of media outlets, but I feel like the most complete of the details of the story is the vanished podcast which you can find for free